Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and get started with setting up our Selenite project in our machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click on this quick start button right over here. So setting up Selenite is actually quite easy. All you need to do is when you create your Selenite project, you simply have to add these lines in your pom.xml file, specifically if you're using Maven. For Gradle, you're going to have to add these lines. But in our project, we're going to be using Maven. So I'm going to copy these lines. And then I'm going to go to IntelliJ. That's the IDE I'm using. You can use anything that you want. In my case, I've noticed that using IntelliJ is actually quite easy when you're setting up your test. So I'm going to click on New Project. And here I'm going to select Maven because that's what we're going to be working with. And I'm going to go next and then I will add in my project name. So in this case, let's say I will say Selenide series. All right. So this is my project that I just created. And by default, it opened up the pom.xml file for me. So that's great because this is what we need. And I already went ahead and copied those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and add these lines in my project right here. So I will do that. I'm going to simply paste this. All right. So let me just zoom this in. All right, so this is better. Okay, if you notice, we see this red line over here because it's saying that we're trying to use dependencies, but in order for you to use dependency, you need to first add in the dependencies on top. So which is going to be our parent. So I'm gonna do dependencies and within that we can add in multiple dependency. So the first one we need is for our selenide. So you can see that we're getting it from this, which is a group ID, the artifact ID is selenide, and that's the version that I'm using. So that's good. So right now you can see this is actually red and that's because if I just simply go here, you're gonna see that this is not found right now. And that's okay to actually address this. I'm simply gonna click on this load Maven changes. When I will do that, it will simply go ahead and resolve all the dependencies that I have. And this particular error message that we're getting and as you can notice at the bottom, it's installing all the Selenite dependencies for me. Once this is installed, this red message will go away and there you go. We do not see this anymore because these dependencies are now installed. And if I click on Maven right here, just go to Selenide and go to dependencies. You can see right now that I have Selenide dependencies right here. And along with Selenide dependencies, we have some extra stuff as well, which I went ahead and installed. For now, we won't worry about that. So I'm gonna simply minimize that. The next thing we're gonna need is a test runner. How exactly we're gonna be running a test. So for that, we're gonna be using testng in this series. So to go ahead and set up testng, I'm going to go to Chrome and I searched for Maven testng already on Google. So the first link is which you're going to have to work with, which is mavenrepository.com. And then right here, you can pretty much use any version. Let's say if I want to go with the 7.5, instead of going with the latest, I'll just go with a little bit old one. I will just copy this. And then I'm going to go back to my IntelliJ. And as part of my dependencies, I'm going to add in this another dependency. And I will save this as well. So just like the previous one, we have to make sure that we install this as well. So I have this basically the refresh load Maven changes icon. I'm going to click on that again. It will go ahead and make sure that it will install testng. And it says it's already installed. So that's great. And if I go over here, take a look at my dependencies. Now you can see I have Selenide as well as testng, both of them with the version that we installed. So 6.6.4 and then 7.5 version for Selenide. Oh, sorry, for testng. So that's great. So this is kind of the setup part that we need to do. It wasn't too bad, right? All we had to do was simply create a new Maven project in IntelliJ, and it went ahead and created this pom.xml file for us. Then all we did is created this particular block, which we basically copy pasted. So we added dependencies. Within the dependency, I added Selenide, and then I added testng. Now that's all we need. The next step is going to be for us to go ahead and start writing our test. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna go to source and within source, you can see I have main and a test. So with main, I probably don't really have anything there, so that's fine. In test, I can see I have this Java uh, directory over here. So I'm gonna change this Java directory to basically refactor this and do a rename. And I'm gonna change this one to specs. Here, we're gonna store all of our specs. And now I'm gonna do new file, and this is going to be a Java class. And within my Java class, I'm gonna add in my first file name. So here I'm going to add in my file name. So I'm going to do home test. And then I'm simply going to hit enter. 
All right, so it went ahead and created this home test Java file for me. Okay, so that's good. Now, how do we go ahead in terms of start writing a test? So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. Right now, we're gonna copy paste some code which is already there as part of our quick start guide. We're gonna paste it, we're gonna try to run this to see whether that will work. And then in the next video, we're gonna deep dive into how exactly those tests are working and how it's actually running and plus how we can set up a new test. So for that, I'm gonna go back to Chrome. And in my quick start guide, you can see that they have two stuff here. So if I zoom in. So the first thing we need to do is import all the required classes. So I'm just gonna copy this thing, go back to my IntelliJ. And at the very top, I'm gonna import these classes. Now these classes are from our Selenite project. You can see this is my um, project ID. And then from there, I actually have Selenite, which is part of my over here, so group ID and artifact. So that's what we're using over here. So these are just the dependencies that we need in order for us to set up our test. Now I'm gonna go back and copy the test that they added there. So this is the test. Now actually, instead of using this, what I'm gonna do is go back to IntelliJ and then here we're just gonna create our own test. So for that, I'm gonna do Command N or if you're using Windows, you can probably do Control N or I think you can even just do right click and then do generate and it will show you whether to use the command N or control N. All right, so once I do that, it says, what do I need? Do I need a test method, setup method, tear down, and so on. In my case, I need a test method. So it will go ahead and add this annotation for test, and then I need, can go ahead and basically write my test name. So the very first test that I'm gonna be writing is to validate my page URL and the title. So I'm just gonna say test page URL and title. So that's my first test name. And the moment we did this, if you notice at the very top, we imported this test ng annotation, which is this test right here. So this is dependent on that. So if you see this, then that's because of that reason. All right, so let's take a look at what test we are actually writing. So I'm gonna go back to Google Chrome. So we're gonna come to this URL, which is practice.automationbro.com. And once we are here, we have to simply verify the URL that I'm on actually on this page, which is practice.automationbro.com. And then I have to get the title of the page. And title, you can find it at the top, which says practice e-commerce site dash automation bro. Or you can also get the title if you do inspect and simply just go all the way top to the header. And within header, you can see the title, which is pretty much this. So I will just copy this from my reference. So really simple test, simply go to the website practice.automationbro.com and then verify the title and the URL. Okay, so let's go back and start writing our test. So let's think about this. What are we trying to do here? The first thing I'm doing is I want to go ahead and open my URL, right? I need to open that particular page or that URL. So in Selenite, if you want to open a particular URL, all you have to do is just type in open. And the moment I do that, you can see I'm getting all this um, methods over here and it's giving me options of what I can put it in. So I just clicked on open and then here I need to pass in my URL. So the URL in my case is going to be practiceautomationbro.com. So that's what I'm gonna add in here. All right, so that's my URL that I've just added it in over here. So what this will do is it will go ahead and open up my URL so we can test it out. I'm simply gonna click on this arrow button here, which is for play. And it says, okay, do I want to run this test? I will say, yes, I do. So this will go ahead and open up the Chrome driver. You can see right here. And then right away, it actually went ahead, open up the URL and it says the test passed right over here. So how easy that was, right? I did not have to set up any Chrome driver because by default, Selenite took care of that for me. And the default browser with Selenite is actually Chrome. So it went ahead and installed Chrome driver. And then at the same time, it opened up the Chrome for me. And it took care of all of the opening of the browser, closing the browser by itself. I did not have to manually configure that just like the way we do it in Selenium Web Driver Java. We don't have to do any of that. Selenite itself can take care of it for us. So that's pretty nice. Now the next thing we have to do is go ahead and verify our URL as let's verify the title. So for that, I'm gonna create a new variable name that URL. And here we can use something called webdriver runner dot URL. So what this does is it simply goes ahead and gets the current URL and then it gets that URL and it will store it over here to the URL. Once I have that, I am simply gonna use my assertion. So the assertion will be simple, assert equals, so we need to import assert equals, which is part of my test ng. If I double click on this, 
and it will show up it cannot resolve a set equals so either i can create a local variable which we do not want or we can go to more actions now over here if you do not see an option to import stng assertion which is assert equal alternatively what you can do is simply copy this and just paste it here and instead of using annotation we need assertions so i'm going to simply remove this and do dot assertion or basically dot assert and then here i'm going to do dot star so basically i'm saying i need to import everything as part of the test ng assertions now the difference between this one is it's not going to be just like this this will be a static import so i'm going to do static so i've added that over here now if i go ahead and add in the parentheses so you can see that this is not grayed out anymore and since this is part of static i'm just going to paste it over here just so it's in the same level all right now we have the assert equals here we're going to pass in our value so the first one is going to be let's say my url which is my expected here oh sorry this is the actual which is what it's going to get and then i'm going to put in my expected so the expected is going to be simply this because this is where i'm trying to go so i'm going to paste that right here and then we're going to add our semicolon there perfect so this is what we did we went ahead and fetched our url by using webdriver runner.url and we stored that in a variable then I'm using assert equals, which is part of my test ng assertions. And then I'm simply making sure that my actual, which is URL, should be equal to the expected, which is right here. Let's try to run this to make sure this still works. Perfect. So we just ran it and this successfully worked without any issues. So that's great. Now we need to do the same thing for our title as well. So I'm just going to copy this because it's not going to be any different. I'm going to change this to title and here to get the title I simply have to just add in title here so I'm going to do title and this will go ahead and fetch the title for me and I'm going to do the assert equals this time I'm going to add in title and then I will add in my expected title which I already copied before so I will paste that over here perfect and that's it for my assertion for my title as well along with my url so i'm going to run all of this together and this one should work without any issues look at that my test worked successfully so that's how easy it is guys to simply go ahead and set up your test with selenide literally under what 10 minutes we went ahead and set up our project with selenide I did not have to worry about setting up any Chrome driver. I did not have to worry about like opening up my browser, closing the browser and so on. All I did was copied my dependencies right here, right for my Selenide as well as for TestNG. Then my Selenide went ahead and took care of everything else. Then from there, I went ahead and created a new spec file or you can call it a new test file. And within that test file, I created my test block here. And then with on my test block, all I did was added my test name. I said, hey, I'm opening up a URL, which is my URL right here. And then I'm verifying my URL as well as my title. So for that, I use this method, webdriverrunner.url. And for title, I simply add in the title right here. If you're wondering how come I knew about these methods, well, this is part of the documentation. There's nothing that I did over here. Please just simply go up, go to the documentation. And while they do not have the best documentation and the reason behind that was this is going to be exactly same as what Selenium WebDriver does. They only added in additional APIs, which you can take advantage of. So here, if I went to API and just search for, let's say the URL, you can see that in order to open the URL, I have this thing, which is open string URL. And in order for me to get the current URL, I can just go to WebDriver runner and just do dot URL, which is going to return the current URL. We also have some other methods as well. So this is basically the API. We're going to go through some of these just so you guys get more familiarity with it. And later on, you can just play around with it on your own. Just so if you're setting up your test, you know how to read this documentation as well. So that's it for this video, guys. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and start learning more about Selenide. All right. So if you'd like to support my work, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button on this video. And you could also support me by sharing this video with others. And if you have the financial means, feel free to show your support using the super thanks button below. That's all for now guys, I will see you all in the next one.